Now there are two different kinds of performances. I call them type one and type two. Um, the first one is where you just start with an alternating structure, alternating packet, even size packet. So to keep things simple, I thought we would just do a red black alternation of eight cards. Okay. So what we do here is we're going to mix this packet thoroughly, but the spectator is going to help us. Okay. So the Hummer shuffle involves just two very different but significant steps that just randomize this packet of cards. The first one is a random cut. A random cut, you just move over a certain number of cards and then move the top to the bottom, bottom to the top. The other step is that you can always flip the top two cards. So random cut, flip two. Random cut, flip two. Random cut, flip two. Random cut, flip two. Okay. Um, it ends up that you can also flip four if you would like or any even number. So we can do a random cut and then we can take the top four and then flip those over. And there's many variations on this. Oh, by the way, at any point you can also flip the entire packet and work from the other side. Random cut, flip two maybe this time. Random cut, maybe we'll flip four. Okay. Um, but you can bring the spectator in because what you can do is you can push off pairs and give them the option to leave the cards as they are or to flip them. So you're going to just kind of give the spectator tremendous freedom and how these cards are going to be mixed together. So maybe they say leave. Maybe they say flip here, which is fine. Flip again and maybe leave. Okay. You can do that for four cards or six or eight. Leave or flip. Flip. Okay. Leave. Very good. Okay. Now there's some additional things that you can do that I've discovered, like odd size coats and things. Uh, but we'll we'll stop there. We'll we'll just go with a random cut, flip two or four if you like, any even number. Okay. So um, as a note to you as the performer and the one preparing for the Hidden Structures online course, um, we can actually finish the routine in a number of different ways. Now probably the simplest or most direct is to do this. Just do a left, right, left, right. Like that. And now the spectator is free to flip and stack these in any order. So maybe they Maybe they flip this one, which is fine. And then they can stack like this or put it underneath. Okay. So just think about all of the choices that we've given the spectator here. And once again, as a note to you as the performer, it ends up that this random cut flipping two cards achieves every possible ordering of the cards. So in that sense, the cards genuinely are being randomized. They're being mixed. That, that's not a fib there. They are truly being reordered in a random fashion depending on the choices made here. Now, the thing that's not random is the distribution of up and down facing cards. So there will be, and you won't be able to really see it now because we've come, come to the end, but before we did that final little left, right, random flip, um, the cards will have a special structure relative to up facing and down facing cards, but that structure will not be apparent to virtually any, everyone. So at this point, what you do is you say, boy, after all of that mixing, you would think that these cards would be well mixed. And, and please remember that you were the one making these important choices. So what kind of choice maker are you? Well, let's find out. Whoa. How, how in the world? Wait a second. So we have all the black facing up. No way. 
and all of the red facing down. How in the world did you just happen to make this perfect series of choices that would lead to this outcome? I doubt you could do that again. Okay, so ho however you kind of want to finish it here. Of course, if you follow this procedure, it, it works every time. It will always result with the even position cards be facing the opposite way to the original odd position cards. Okay, so as um, <clears throat> mentioned right here. Okay. Now the other type of Hummer performance is where you start with a certain number of cards facing up and a certain number of cards facing down at the, at the very beginning. Okay, so for example, I have five black cards and three red. And so within my series on the Humber Principle, I created this narrative about birds of a feather flocking together. So we have like red birds here and black birds there, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to have the black birds going south and the red birds are going to be going north, okay? And then you can mix these however you want. You truly can. So if you want to do a big messy table shuffle, um, but we are starting with the colors facing the opposite way. So you can picture that as the birds flying in opposite directions, okay? But now we're going to mix up those little birds. In fact, you, you as the spectator will be doing the mixing, okay? So we want to just scramble these birds because what we'd like to do is test the truth of the aphorism, birds of a feather flock together. Is that actually true? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to just mix these little birds by flipping over every other card. And I can show you that, you know, that has started to mix the reds with the blacks facing different ways, right? You can kind of see that, okay? But I want you to influence the process here. So we're going to do the same sort of thing we did before. I can put this down or flip it over. You want down, leave or flip? Flip, okay. Leave, leave, okay. Maybe we'll do four at a time here. You want leave or flip? Leave, what about these? Flip, okay, very good. Now we could do that kind of thing for as long as you like. Okay. In fact, another thing you can do, let me just point it out here since we're um, looking at, you know, trying to show you a number of different elements that you can bring in. You can put out pairs or actually any even number of cards and then you can give the spectator the choice to like pick up any one of these and either set it on top of the others or actually flip it before it's set on top. So maybe this one just goes down as is and then this whole thing gets flipped. Okay truly a free choice. It really is. And so I just want to show you how messy the cards are getting. Okay, They really are quite messy. Okay, so what we're going to do to, to fi our final step in our test of the aphorism birds of a feather flock together is to go ahead and just deal these out into four piles. And then we're going to do something called a folding procedure. A folding procedure, this is where we can fold from right to left, left to right, inside out, or outside in. You want to go outside in? Okay. So this is where you go like that, and now you're free to flip either one and put it on top of the other. You want that one on top of that one? Okay. So let's see how we did. Is there evidence of the truth of the aphorism, birds of a feather flock together. Oh boy, I think there is quite a bit of evidence here. We have all the red birds now facing south, heading south, and all the, all the black birds are headed north. So boy, there really is something to that idiom, birds of a feather flock together. Okay, well anyway, that's, those are just very simple demonstrations of the Hummer principle, a powerful, powerful mathematical principle in the study of mathematical card magic.